Hey, hi. Hi. I can see it on the screen, but I'm hoping it's okay. So, hi everybody. I'm Reika Kovacin from Finland. I'm sorry about my voice. I have a bit of flu going on, but I'm so excited to be here and so honored to do a short Facebook Live with the fabulous Impasto page. So, let's get started. And thank you my husband for doing the photo or the camera thing. It seems that at least somebody's watching, so yay, thank you so much. So, first I want to share with you this layout. I have used the impasto paint here on the background. And oh, this is how they are looking. Good afternoon, hi. It's actually uh, 9 p.m. here, so sorry about the lighting also. But I'm hoping you can see. So the impasto paints are really highly pigmented acrylic paints. And what's really great about them that they are actually really heavy body. So you can build dimension from, uh, from them. For example, here in the layout, you can see the race effect here. It's done only using the paints. No modeling paste needed, just the paste. And here I have just used a cosmetic sponge with a stencil. So the look is totally different. And they are matte after drying. And what I like about these paints is to mix them with a uh, silicone brush or ballet knife. Because they are so heavy bodied, so it's easy to work with a silicone brush, like this one from Finnabar line. So what I'm going to do with you right now is something I prepared earlier today. A little ATCs with a couple of different acrylic paint techniques. Mm, I actually did a couple of samples kind of cooking show thing. So if we run into trouble I can oh, always pick those up. So acrylic paints, impasto paints are really heavy body but uh, all acrylic paints rather stick to the surface than absorb. So you are able to work in different surfaces. For example, if you want to paint metal, you can't use mists, not without gesso anyway, but you can always use these. So here's just a cream cardstock, which I painted with Finnabar's heavy gesso, black because black kind of makes the colors really to shine. So, of course you can do it with this, or actually you can use a brush too, but because these are so heavy bodied, uh, the brush strokes will show. So if you want kind of a smooth surface, the easy way is to do this. Just use your fingers. Be a kind of a kid again. Mix the paint. Acrylic paints dry really quickly, so you don't have much time to mix with mix those together. But of course you can build layers as well. See? They're really highly pigmented and the finish is going to be matte. But if you want, let me show you this one, this kind of effect. You can also see the texture because I'm not sure if this is too dry already. But I'm just spraying some water onto my hand. I'm putting the drops on top of the paint and naturally the water dilutes the paint. So when I then dry it really quickly, the parts, sorry, the parts with the water on top, they stay moist. And the other parts are drying. So when you then use something like a cloth, 
they remove the pain so it comes this kind of splotchy effect and also because the paints are so heavy bodied it creates the texture with the cloth so you're able to layer them and build kind of textures at the same time when I'm doing ATCs I rarely do the backgrounds in this size I always do a bigger piece and then cut it to smaller but also you can use the same technique for journal pages or for scrap scrapbooking layouts and naturally the same effect is done with a white background I just really like going on top of black one because it really makes the colors to shine maybe a bit of blue there I think there's 15 different colors and as you can see here you can mix your own you can do it on top of the project or then just use your palette knife and do a red ready mix if you prefer that one again just waters and splashing you can also use water to dilute the paint to make it more like a, a watercolor effect but if you want to build um, acrylic washes so really subtle layers I suggest using the Finnabar soft uh, gloss gel or soft matte gel because then you can create these lovely thin layers which then can be mixed and for example if you do a collage and the bottom then you can build the colors on top and still see the collage piece on top it's a really wonderful technique also and that way you are not diluting the binder as well so they will still stick to anything for example if you want this little bit of color on top of metal for example if you dilute the paint too much the binder in the paint also gets diluted and it's not sticking that well but if you mix it with a clear gel which Finnabar has the 3d and the soft ones so then you're good to go so this is my first technique for the background let me just grab this piece of paper so we don't have to need to wait for the paint to dry mm, let me just get my paper cutter here sorry oh there it is And then we can cut a piece. As we're doing ATCs, it's three and a half by two and a half. But naturally, you can do whatever size. If you're doing a card, for example, this kind of technique and color scheme would go lovely to a Halloween card, for example. Maybe an invitation, even. Or a little thank you note. Then, again, as these are heavy bodied paints, let me do them stenciling on top. I'm normally working with kind of um, colors that are near to each other in the color wheel. The higher the contrast, naturally it's, it's striking, but to me it's always lovely to go with complementary colors like yellows, reds on the same project rather than blues and oranges for example so you can see it's only the paint nothing more just the paint and it's giving me this raised effect the less you work with your palette knife or the silicone brush the less it's kind of spreading underneath the stencil and what you can do with the paints as well is the marks you can see here the little lines and the circles they are done with the paints as well let me just grab some white for this one because it's always good for me to well at least in my opinion to use both black and white in this project as 
then you get kind of the extreme ends of the color wheel. You get the black to give some contrast and then the white to give some light. So I can just use this, my brush. You can even use a piece of thick paper, like a cardstock, to do marks or the Finobar texture brushes. Or you can then create your 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 um, kids toy box. This is a hammock eat. I'm not sure if that's the word in English. Sorry, English is not my native tongue. So, so but it's a bead, plastic bead. But I can create lovely little circles with it. Just some fun marks, and. As it's acrylic paint, it dries really quickly, so you're able to work really fast to make different kinds of samples. And then just using my silicone brush a bit, just teeny tiny touch of more texture. Just to try to show you that there are so many different tools you can use with these paints. Here's a couple of dried versions. You can see here I've used the silicone brush. There's the stenciling and the mark making. Again, it's all about the colors. Then, uh, if you want to do splashes, and I'm kind of a splash addict, I can't finish a brooch without. What you need to do, oh, sorry, dirty water. What you need to do is to dilute the paint, because otherwise you can just huff and puff, in a way. Try and try to get it out of the brush, but it won't go. So I'm just using a wet brush, diluting the paint. Again, if you want it to be a bit heavier, in a way, you can use gel as well. Just doing light splashes. They always kind of bring that light to the project. And then what I did with these two cards, there's main focus is of course the paints and it's so fun to play with these. I mean, they are highly pigmented, they are addictive even. You can just have fun and use your fingers, be a kid and play with the paints. But what I did with these, there's just some twine staples and then these photos are from a uh, Finnabar ephemera pack so there's all kinds of different photos you can use nothing more needed if you're doing a card it would be a kind of fun idea to actually include a picture of the receiver in the card maybe we should go with that one for these projects I'm actually surprised that I used like these kinds of colors because normally I gravitate towards a turquoise and blue and these are like red and yellow. Something is something is wrong with me. <laughs> so that's the door. Let's cut there. Just quickly cutting the shape. I'm thinking I don't need that much because I'm putting it a bit off the center anyway. So I think this would go here. Does that look good? And then the under girl. Sorry. Sorry, you need to watch me cut. I should have pre-cut this. But maybe I can say in the middle that thank you especially for coming. And if you have any questions, I'll browse through the comments later on. And see if I, if I can inform you of anything else. So... 
less detail just the twine Prima also has lovely different twines and that's from a, a, mm -hmm. what is it uh, called F flower pack again black and white goes to any project just using staple stapler sorry that's the word and then the other one and this way I can highlight the paint don't don't hide the background if you are using a lot of time to do the background don't hide it because that's the usual mistake I'm doing on the other hand to me to work on a project is also really important to me the part where I play with the paints and materials it's 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 important now I'm just using regular glue naturally you can use the soft gels for this stage or you can use the 3d gel if even and if you want to add like thinner bar metal bits and pieces here, then the 3D gel, the gel medium is wonderful because it, it holds the weight as well. No, actually I need to move that one a bit there because I've got the very hand. So I need Then we can use just the white paint, paint, no, sorry, pen, to kind of frame it. Naturally, if you are good with brushes, you can use the thin brush and the white impasto paint, because there's black and white paint in the impasto series as well. <coughs> sorry. Like that, and these here, the words, they are from a Finnabier stamp set. <coughs> Sorry, I love these little sayings. They are so handy because they go to cards and they go to uh, journaling. For example, this one, this this is art is good for you, definitely. So what I did, I just took a random piece of paper, stamped it and then cut it. And the idea in here was like these two complement each other, collect moments. They work as an individual, but they make a bigger piece when they are together. Just like me and my husband, oh. <laughs> being, <laughs> being silly here. So. Thank you for watching. Do you want me to finish the cards? Well, I'll put them on my blog soon. And thank you for watching. My name is Riko Povasin. I'm a Finnabare brand ambassador. And I'm really honored for this, this opportunity to be here. <coughs> Sorry. And, well, I'm a part of Prima team as well. So thank you so much for coming and I'll check the comments if you have any questions. Thank you. Bye.